I don't know if you've seen recently that I've been recording a lot of integrations with Matron. Well, Matron is something I have a great passion for. I'm one of the co-founders for this software. It's an engineered software that I've helped build, develop, and progress in the correct fashion. So it's something that I use on a regular basis and I think it outstrips any of its competitors. So it's a tool that's built by engineers for engineers to make your designs better, faster, making engineering more enjoyable. So I'll go into a comparison between what I see Excel being used for, what I see MathJot being used for, and after using it for a while, you will get to love the feel and flow that you get to use with these type of editors. So let's break it down. A lot of traditional workflows, especially back in the day, will switch between probably a hand calculation, Excel, some Word documents, and you're flipping in between all these different types of communication styles. As you've got the hand comp, just a back of the hand check to make sure things are correct, or show you're working out about how you got to your result. Or well, Word to start off with, yeah, it can present nice, it can produce quite neat calculations. However, typically it's not dynamic. Where Excel, it can be dynamic, you can make it look neat, However, it's not really there to process a calculation. You do need to click on a cell to work out what it's times and multiplied for. Really where the benefits of Excel come in are not those one-off calculations. They're not the validation of your FEA. They're for processing the results out of the FEA. They're about bulk data transfers where you might need to combine a data source here with a data source there and combine them together. So when you've got big databases that need to interact with each other, that's really where the benefit is. And that's typically where I will start with big databases transferring data around probably start in Excel to trial how I want to use it before going into a more detailed system like using Python with pandas, where a lot of time my calculations are one off. They're somewhat bespoke. They also need to have an explainer type to it so people understand where and how I got to the results. The benefit of using a software like MathJot comes in is it clearly lays it out, clearly explains how you got to your result. Makes it a lot easier to explain to other people about how you got to your answers is you can say, these are the numbers that I've gone through. So whether you're just starting out, it's a really good way to teach yourself about how the answers have got there and you're just writing it in a natural form as opposed to Excel, which you've got equals A, A1 times A2 times A3. You can just say A equals A times B. So it's in very much natural language. And in addition to that, you may have a lot of key variables that you may need to use. So for example, we're using Greek symbols and other variables that are undercase and lowercase. Quite often, if you're not times you are the right one every single time, it can be very hard. This is where MathDrop comes into its own to help you out with that. You see, the variables are actually saved in the function box below. So if we look here, we've got this complex formula trying to run through it, but we need to use a value that we used earlier and called up earlier. We can just type through that. So we type the C and you can see these filtered functions are happening down the bottom. Press tab, I've moved into it and I can click the correct one that I need to insert into the calculation, making sure that I'm timesing it by the right variable. And we're going back and we can easily validate which way it wants to go through. It also allows you to reuse those calculations over and over again. Or just say you need to explain to a graduate about how something works. You can give them these calculations that they can see why you've done certain things and how the answers have gotten out to the correct response. So I have a series of saved jots that I use all the time. Or just say we need to do a worked example. We're doing lots of different country worked examples at the moment. I'll go through the US code, I'll go through the Australian code, and I'll go through the Euro code as individual standalone pages. And then at the end, I'll have a comparison sheet that would take the maximum of each of them or the minimum, depending on which way I need to do the design. But it'll compile the maximum all the Australian, US, and New Zealand codes, compile it in one to find the answer that I'm looking for. So if it's load, it'll be a higher end capacity, it'll typically be on the lower end. So where do I use a tool like this? Quite often, I'll be working in detailed software like FEA, getting results out, but how do I really validate what the answers are? Or if we've got a load rundown, is another key place that I use it. But let's start with the FEA. We have some sort of stress on a system. Is that stress in the right order of magnitude? And what type of forces is it? It'll obviously potentially have a tension or axial force, I'll have a flexure force, and I'll have a shear force, which all combined into peak stresses. If we're looking at the peak stress on the system, we typically want to combine both flexure and axial to see what the load will be in there. And by knowing the depth of the section, you can calculate the Z. You also know the A, so you can use that for the area of calculation. So if we sum those both up, we can get a peak stress that we're expecting to see. And is it in the right order of magnitude? So that's checking whether the hand comp is correct or the FEA is correct. It's not necessarily one or the other is it wrong. And with that, I can quickly validate the results are coming out of the system correctly. For example, if I'm doing a load rundown, I've got a column. All I need to know is the tributary. I can times it by the number of floors. What I can do, I can spend a lot of time to make this calculation very neat, as I will use this on other buildings. So I've got a diagram off to the side showing you how to calculate the tributary area and the different aspects that you need to put into that equation. So it can be dynamic and change over time for different areas. Now, I have n as a variable, so you're changing by the number of floors. 
This was a key aspect that people used to do back in the day with hand comps. They used to do a preset up hand comp that they might scan or print, or they might even have it redone that they redraw over time. But as we have the dynamic one, we can do it dynamically in MathDot under these circumstances. Going back, we're going back to that dynamic calculation, times it by the number of floors, and therefore now we have an area load. We can also look at how many floors we have. So say we have one plant floor, a couple of residential floors and a roof floor. So we can have different variables for each of them. So we can calculate the roof load, we can calculate the general residential floor and then and the plant floors. And by knowing those numbers of each of these, we can do a detailed load rundown based on the tributary area of that column. We can also go down at the bottom, have a quick validation of how much tributary area do we have? What is the average load capacity on that floor? Again, as we've seen in earlier videos, for rules of thumb, somewhere between 10 and 15 typically, normally with a residential, normally on the lower end. So therefore then we can check that load is in the right order of magnitude. And if we have the correct load at the base, we know what the size of the column roughly needs to be by taking a 0.5 factor of the F-C. And by changing the F-C, we can change the size and square area of that column at the base of the structure. Another one that I've had to do in the past is more of a detailed assessment or bolting it onto other aspects of design. For say, for example, sometimes I might have something that has a precast section and an in-situ section. Now, most softwares won't allow for this. So there's additional checks that I need to make on the interface, there's additional deflection that I need to increase. And by having something like MathDot, I can do a really detailed calculation about how I've gone about adjusting for these arrangements, calling out the references to different books or code clauses, how I've got the inputs in from the software, how it's adjusted the design and what the end output is. So it allows for a really detailed assessment about how you get through designs. In addition to that, it's really easy for someone else to pick up. I send them off to them, I can hit the share button. I share it to them and then they can go through and change the values for their different areas. It allows them to play and understand in a better fashion. Excel does that to some extent, but it's nowhere near as good a learning tool or clarity that other people are expecting. And too often, how have you seen people making mistakes by them timesing by the wrong number and starting to click on it to realize what that error is. If you have a software like MathJot, you can clearly see what the actions and times has been. So what you see is what you get. Just written in natural, plain language, that's a lot more presentable. You can either take screenshots of it, put it back into your Word documents, you can either insert it into other PDFs, even just print it alone as a standalone calculation. And when a lot of people see that, they'll see the professionalism that you bring to the table and also show the clarity of what they're expecting, making your designs easy to pass. I know what you may be saying, maybe you're coming from a different tool, such as MathCAD or SMath. Well, don't worry, we've also got you covered here. As we have an extract tool that allows you to import those softwares into the MathJot format. So it will take them, process them, and put them into the format in MathJot. Yes, you may need to clean them up a little bit and maybe need to add a little bit of images, but it gets you half the way there that you don't need to build it up for scratch. And if you have been trying out the tool and you will get a 25% discount using the code in the below description. If you've ever enjoyed tool, make sure you comment down below. I'm always looking for improvement. But if you did enjoy this video, you will also like this rules of thumb that will make your designs better, faster, and more efficient. And if you're interested in my channel, there's two additional ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. Without the support of my YouTube and Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. And I hope to see you next time.